While SpaceX is well known for revolutionizing many unique industries, there's one that doesn't necessarily stand out among the rest. In a company providing reusable rockets with plans to create future colonies on other planets, there's one specific industry that's quite boring but presents a fantastic opportunity. And that would be manufacturing. While it's quite a general topic, manufacturing envelops virtually every country, with millions of businesses falling into the industry. Over 636,000 are considered manufacturing businesses in the United States alone, marking trillions in exports and imports. And that'd be ignoring the $6.5 trillion in Asia, nearly $3 trillion in Europe, and the hundreds of billions spread elsewhere. It's obviously a significant industry considering that everything physical is manufactured, or else it just wouldn't exist. The only real significant thing that manufacturing hasn't touched has been space. And Varda Space plans to change that. A small company founded in just November 2020, Varda has big goals and some big partners to go along with it. Whether it's creating an industrial space station, releasing hundreds of manufacturing satellites, or the company's $53 million backing in the form of Peter Thiel's Founders Fund and Kosla Ventures, there's a lot of potential behind Varda Space. Except the company in the title isn't Varda Space, it's SpaceX. So what does SpaceX have to do with this? Well, the company is the launch provider behind Varda Space's planned 2023 manufacturing launch, which was chosen thanks to SpaceX being the lowest cost available solution, alongside being one of the most reliable out there. Varda plans to put a few of their Rocket Lab originated photon satellite buses into orbit with a Falcon 9, leaving their little manufacturing plant up in orbit to produce whatever they really please. While it seems a little counterintuitive, there are a few benefits to manufacturing a mini manufacturing plant than launching it into space. The biggest is what the limited gravity and lack of oxygen can do. When in Earth's orbit, you're obviously greeted with vast openness and a lack of oxygen. While that might not be the best for humans, it's impressive for anything that doesn't need air to live. Anything like a manufacturing satellite bus, or something that could gain from a lack of potential contaminants. These products would need purity, like semiconductors, processors, chemicals, and more which could be ruined with even a few dust particles. Processes that need insane heat or cold. For example, those provided by the sun or a vacuum, or much more. Manufacturing in space builds on greater strength and lower stress. And thanks to lower gravity, it can make some tasks much more straightforward, like fiber optic construction. No longer do an odd amount of manufacturing creations have to deal with gravity-related issues and may instead focus on deploying their current operations somewhere in orbit. And that's where SpaceX comes in. None of this is really possible without SpaceX. So unless we expect only the largest manufacturing companies to push towards space, SpaceX is the only company that can really make this possible. After all, SpaceX is the only viable option for a smaller company with time, space, and budget constraints, especially considering how cheap the company expects to make its launches in the future. Plus, they're the only one to have built the rent-a-spaceship business model into something that works. SpaceX is a $100 billion company, and that's for good reason. They're known for being innovators and pushing towards ideas that not many have thought of or really attempted successfully, and that would also apply to manufacturing. While they're not necessarily the company that's currently sending small manufacturing satellites into space, they obviously have the potential to be. So if you think of Starlink, for example, there's a great showcase. SpaceX certainly isn't the first to invest in satellite internet or even a mesh network, although they've certainly made their mark. Companies like DirecTV, Dish, Iridium Communications, GlobalSat, and many more have already existed for decades. And SpaceX has managed to revolutionize these companies' services to a new market within just a few years. If you had asked a millennial or teen before Starlink if they had thought about signing up for a satellite internet subscription, they'd all say no. However, after SpaceX's very public Starlink private beta, there would definitely be a massive jump in the number saying yes. And that's because SpaceX innovates things that already exist and turns them into something that hasn't. Starship is similar to an incredibly souped-up space shuttle, but yet with a complete and total overhaul. Starlink is like the Google Fiber of satellite internet providers, and potentially a GPS competitor, global data system, and much more. 
So, although Varda Space is the one taking manufacturing into space aboard SpaceX, right now, what's to say it's not going to change? Even if it doesn't, that's still SpaceX bringing pieces of a more than $12 trillion industry into space. No matter the side of the coin you bet on, SpaceX wins. But who are we kidding? They're definitely going to help the push towards space. With plans for an eventual moon and Mars colony, there's no way that the company expects to ship manufactured products from Earth to a whole other planetary body. With manufacturing pushed to space, it not only opens up the possibilities for greater range and higher quality products, but it also lets SpaceX pull manufacturing towards wherever it plans to go. NASA even has a project named after this whole concept, literally called In Space Manufacturing. Make it, don't take it. That's the slogan. The agency's official website cites in-space manufacturing, or ISM's, ability to build sustainable, flexible missions through on-demand fabrication, repair, and recycling. That would be thanks to tangible cost savings due to reducing launch mass and highly disruptive technologies adapted for operations in the space environment. Manufacturing has a lot to gain from an orbital twist, and NASA sums it up pretty well. There's greater flexibility and sustainability reduced costs and launch mass, and the ability to bring the most modern and even the future of technology on the go. Yeah, since manufacturing revolves around producing whatever is pleased, missions from NASA or SpaceX could even adapt current materials to build new, highly disruptive technologies as they're invented. And SpaceX already has all the tools for this. As we've seen, even the current Falcon 9 is more than compatible with space manufacturing. In addition, there are the cost benefits of taking a SpaceX rocket, the compact number of paying customers on board, and the fact that it's not even close, price and capacity-wise, to the company's planning. If or when Starship comes to fruition, it'll make the entire process more appealing. With launch costs and payload capacities planned at as little as 1 34th and as large as five times what some estimates pin Falcon 9 at, Starship is really big and cheap literally and metaphorically. And with lower prices and greater capacities, SpaceX brings ideas of more extensive orbital processes even further. Compared to the small insulin crystal experiments that today's ISM missions revolve around, a Starship launch or even a Falcon 9 launch could bring larger manufacturing plans to space. Think steel casting plants, metalworking machines, welding, cell construction, massive 3D printing, semiconductor production, and much more. I mean, electron beam welding was confirmed to work in orbit nearly 50 years ago thanks to NASA's Skylab. The big thing that hasn't pushed trillions in gross domestic product to orbit has ironically been money. Manufacturing is an incredibly revenue-heavy industry, but not so great when it comes to profits. After all, you have to source materials, pay for labor, create the products, then sell them above margin so retailers can bump up the price again. As space launch costs and the prices per kilo to bring something to space are incredibly high, there's no way that manufacturing companies could afford, or if they could, would afford, to move a low-margin process to space aboard something that would cost even more. Compared to the decrease in expenses, the increase in costs just hasn't combined into something inspiring for manufacturing companies. Or, well, until now. Even the Falcon 9 has already shown how small companies can bring smaller manufacturing ideas to orbit. And who knows what SpaceX's future plans with vehicles like Starship could bring. With the most significant barrier to space manufacturing being the massive price tag, a $2 million Starship would be a savior. Suddenly, even smaller companies would be able to take advantage of the cheaper costs, greater freedom, higher quality, lower defect rate, and more that comes with orbiting manufacturing. Whether it be large megastructures like satellites, space stations and space colonies, or more advanced fiber optics, semiconductors, and specialized tools, the possibilities for manufacturing in space are endless. So what do you think? Are recent interests in space manufacturing a sign that a portion of the $10 trillion could make it to the space industry? Or are they just a fluke? After all, no major manufacturing company has shown much interest in an idea like this, meaning that it really could only be up to the startups and SpaceX to make it work. And can they? We're talking about a multi-trillion dollar industry that has always had its roots on Earth. So will the promise of space be enough to make some change? Or can things somehow stay the way they've always been?
let us know your thoughts in the comments and make sure to check out some of our other videos in the meantime. So until next time, we'll see you again.